Hey everyone, it is Hunter Fireflower, and in this video, I'll be doing a summary of Star Wars on the Jedi Force Storm number two. So if you haven't seen the first one already, please, I'll leave it in the description. Please watch that video first before you watch this one. But I'll be doing a whole summary of the entire Dawn of the Jedi comic book series, so let's begin. So anyways, we start at, F at Fury's Gate. And this is basically the outermost planet on in the Typhon system. And it's the station, we're at the station that monitors things that are coming in and out of the of the Typhon system. Because as we know previously, nothing can actually really enter the Typhon system because it's protected by this dark matter. So it's very, very, the Typhon system is very safe and no one can really leave the Typhon system because the, this dark matter protects the entire planet. I shouldn't say planet. The dark matter protects the entire planet solar system basically so anyways they get these sensors are picking up this inbound ship and they believe that it might be a sleeper ship which is the, the Thoyor I believe that's what the reference is to and those are basically just these ships that collected species across the entire galaxy and brought them to Tython so they think that that it might be a like a sleeper ship coming back but anyways we have this this person saying that he is going to inform Tython we don't see him yet but we will in a second and he's a Jihadi Ranger and he is Hawk Row, and Hawk Row is the Jihadi Ranger we see in Eruption. I don't believe he's referenced into Void at all. I f I don't believe so. But this is where we get his whole backstory. So, anyways, he's a Jihadi Ranger, and he's going to go back to Tython to no to notify the J the Jihadi Masters that the the sensors are picking up something that's coming into this into the Tython system. And also, Row is feeling that should I call him Row or Hawk? I'll call him Hawk. Hawk is sensing that there's something not quite in balance with the Force and something dark is coming into the Typhon system. He just senses that something bad is going to happen. We go back to Typhon and we're at a Nail Crush, which is the Jedi Temple that is around, around that chasm. That's We talk we first see, see the chasm in, into the Void, and it's basically that one chasm, I believe it's called Ro, I not Rome. Rule, I believe is what it's called. But basically, this is like a chasm that's super force sensitive. And no one has gone to the bottom of it yet because you go crazy. And anyways, uh, the Jihadi here practice alchemy and they do a lot of science-y stuff here. We see Master Quin Jang here, over here with Shay Koda. So Shay's over here where she has like the, the red dreadlocks. And she's trying to basically wrangle up this Rancor Dragon, I believe is what it's called. And there is literally not listening to them at all. And she created this down in her science lab with basically manipulating cells using the force. And all the animals on Tython are going crazy. And Master Kwai Jing is basically saying, like, she senses that there's a force storm coming. And whenever there's a force storm coming, the animals go crazy. And it's because there's a, about to be or going to be an imbalance in the force. And it's basically just foreshadowing that the Ricotta are coming. The Rancor Dragon breaks free of the ropes. I mean, obviously, look how small those ropes are. And she goes down into the Chasm. And then we have Shea Coda goes down <laughs> trying to get her Rancor. And she uses the Force to try and, like, tell it to listen to her and relax so that she can take control. It's really, really stressful. She goes on and then she gets, as she goes closer, closer, closer down to the bottom of the Chasm, she sees a vision of Zesh, as we know, but the Jedi don't know who this is. So they, they see this black figure, and then eventually her master comes down. I, like, whenever I see Master Quan Jang, I just think of, like, Blade or... What's that guy's name? Morpheus from The Matrix. I don't know why. I just... I feel in, like, Matrixy Blade vibes from him. And it's probably just because he's wearing full black and he has, like, these little glasses on. And then he has, like, this braid thing going on. I don't know why. I just, I just, I just get Matrix vibes from him. So anyways... He goes down to save her as she's in shock from this vision and he uses the force and he calms the Rancor Dragon and then they go back to the temple. Shay has a like a little chat with her master saying, you know, I saw something in the force. I'm being summoned somewhere and she goes off on her Rancor Dragon. She's going to go to wherever the force is pulling her and we'll see it later where they're all going. This this comic literally just introduces all of the main characters. The next part, we are at Chick. We're at Chick. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this. We're at Chicago. 
Chicago. Chicago. Okay, whatever the hell it is. And it's basically the seventh planet from the sun. And this is that underworld planet where we have a bunch of crime lords coming in. And we have this one helmeted figure saying that he has a meeting with Ro. And this is the Ro Fortress, and it's ruled by this gangster. Ro's a Jedi, but his entire family actually are these gangsters on this planet. And we have Baron Volnos, who is the head patron, the, the head gangster of Ro. And the, he has a meeting with him, and he's a friend. And so the guards are like, wait a second, that doesn't make any sense. And then this, this guy just kills him. He kind of he looks like a samurai to me, but he's a, he's a Devonian, I believe that's what they're called. Devonians? Whatever. The devil people. So here we have Tasha, the female Twi'lek, talking to her father. And her father's saying, I need you to take up the mantle of Baron of Clan Row. You need to be this crime boss syndicate. You know, come help me rule our whole kingdom type thing. Tasha goes like, no, yeah, no, you can do it. I'm going to do my own little thing. The jihadi are my people. You know, you, my father and my brother were killed in the, in the Deepa Wars. But she, when she says her father... She's talking about, like, her father from the past. Um, she feels like the Deepa Wars changed her father. When all of a sudden we see this, like, bullet come out of nowhere and she, she pushes her father away with the Force and she begins to fight this mercenary, which she easily, which she easily takes him out because the Force, you know, is strong. She's, like, blocking bullets over here. Boom, boom, boom. She all of a sudden sees Zesh and she kind of... The reason why he gets the upper hand is because she sees Zesh and she's just like, what? And it's just an illusion, and so the, the bounty hunter gets a head on her, and then she uses the force to push him away, when all of a sudden her father comes down, grabs the guy, and shoots him dead. And this whole thing is just to, like, the bounty hunter was sent by one of the other barons at Gardo's, and he was sent to basically take out the row baron so that they, they would have more power. So just, like, showing you that there's a lot of crime and corruption going on on the planet. Tasha and her father talk again once more. Her father's always like, I loved you. I always did everything from you. Don't you love me? And she says, I've always loved you. I'll always protect you. But these are crime lords and the jihadi can't get involved with basically dealing with the crime and being a crime boss. That's not the way of the, you know, that's not the way of the jihadi. And she goes on about like her mother was a jihadi and she basically wants to follow her mother's footsteps. And anyway, she leaves saying that the force calls her and she must go. And she leaves her father to rule the crime syndicate. The next person we meet is in the Silent Desert. This is the first uh, Jedi Temple in Dawn of the Jedi. This is the, the temple where they have the weird sand that starts moving, and it's literally in the desert. And we see this Sith pureblood Seknos, I believe is how you pronounce his name. He's impressing all of these ladies with his Force Lightning because he's doing something with the Force that hasn't been done before, and all these chicks are trying to get with him. So he's making this like force lightning ball when all of a sudden he sees Zesh and he's like, what is that? And then he he like flips out and then he eventually starts sh shocking himself and all the girls go, oh no, oh no, our handsome man. He focuses, he regains his force power and then he basically shoots at the, the vision and then it goes away and all the girls are like, oh, are you okay? Are you okay, Seknos? Are you okay? <laughs> his grandmom his grandmother and grandfather come over here and they basically bandage his wounds and say, like, how do you feel? And Seknos is like, did you see that? And they're like, see what? What are you talking about? We didn't see that. His grandmother goes on to say how using force lightning is only on the dark side of the force. And if you want to be a jihadi, you need to have use the force of, you have to use, to be a jihadi, you have to use the light and the dark. And if he constantly uses the dark side of the force, he's going to be sent away and outcasted because jihadi that focus only on one side of the force gets sent to the one of the moons of tython to meditate until they realize like hey there you have to have balance in the force seknos goes on and says you know i gotta leave i gotta follow the footsteps of the great jihadi um, and he goes off because he's being summoned anyways the next part of the comic goes on to bogan where we see dagan Locke. And if you, like I said before, previously, if you only do and if you only work on one side of the force, the light or the dark, they'll send you an exile on either Bogan, if it's the dark side that you keep focusing on, or Ashla, if it's the light side. And anyways, we have Locke over here. He's walking around this temple. It's kind of creepy looking how it's just so dark and the entire planet is literally just like a stone temple. He's over there focusing and he sees a vision of Zesh. 
and he senses darkness. The story continues and we see Jay and Seknos, they meet up and they go about, they're, they're talking about, hey, like you guys had the same vision too. And then they're like, yeah, is that kind of weird? Then Tasha shows up and Shay has some beef with Tasha. She's like, oh great, the princess is here. She's in like her golden little uh, spaceship thing down here. Shay hates her and calls her the princess. Um, I'm not sure quite why. It might be because like their whole her family is rich or whatever, but we'll we'll find out. They're there and they're just like, hey, you guys had the same vision too. Is that kind of weird? And then all of a sudden, Shay sees something coming, and it's a ship literally coming into the atmosphere, and it's on fire. And all of a sudden, they they jump to get out of the way of the ship because it's about to impact them and literally turn them into crisps. They jump out of the way and the ship crashes and then they all have this sense of something, of people dying and in pain and darkness. And there's a battle. And this is literally what happens at the end of Into the Void where all the jihadi have this vision of dying, screams of pain, a battle in darkness, and it's, go- it's foretelling what's going to happen. So this, the, the ship crashes and they're like, we got to check for survivors, but nobody senses any survivors. Everyone is dead. They're searching for survivors. They sense nobody until they find this escape pod. And they're literally about to go into arms because they all sense darkness and anger. They know that somebody's in there and something dark and ang- angry is in there. Through the force, of course. We see Zesh saying death. So they sense darkness, intense darkness anger and death and this is what zesh looks like without he takes off his helmet and he has this little weird triangle tattoo maybe we'll find out why they have this weird triangle tattoo it might just be like a force hound thing i'm not quite sure because the other sif chick had little force tattoos too so we'll find out but anyways guys that's it for this summary of star wars dawn of the jedi force storm number two So please leave a comment of what you liked or what you didn't like about the comic or what you think else I should do. Please thumbs up and like, it really helps me. And please subscribe if you want to see similar content. I'll be doing a whole series regarding this entire comic. So if you want to see what the rest of the comic is or you just want a quick summary, you don't want to have to read it all, you can just watch my videos. So pay attention for those. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Stay frosty.